Okay, so this video is going to look at trapezoidal rule. And we use trapezoidal rule when we are looking to get the area of shapes that have quite irregular boundaries, okay? And um, mostly shapes that we're talking about would be maybe plots of land or fields or things like that, uh, that wouldn't have, you know, a rectangular shape, they'd have kind of a very irregular shape. Um, so the good news is with trapezoidal rule is that the rule is in the log tables. So we're going to have a look at that first. This is on page 12 of your log tables, okay? And here it is, trapezoidal rule. And you can see it's associated with these kind of irregular shapes. Now, the good news is that mostly when this question does come up, it tells you in the question to use trapezoidal rule in order to estimate the area. And that's what we're, we're doing with trapezoidal rule. We're making an estimation by breaking the shape up into a uh, trapezia. Okay, so one trapezium, but there would be many trapezia. So that's what that is. It's kind of a breakdown of using the formula for the area of a trapezium uh, multiple times because we're splitting the land up into strips. Anyway, what this video is going to concentrate on is basically just you being able to use this rule, okay? As you can see here, it looks quite complicated the way they have it written. And what I first want to do is I want to explain it in a much easier uh, format, and then it's going to be much more straightforward to actually use and apply. All right, so the first thing I want to do is take down the way it is in the log tables. So, well, they have these kind of squiggly brackets for the equal sign because it's an approximation. OK, they have H over 2 and then they have Y1 plus YN plus 2 times Y2 plus Y3 plus Y4. This is just exactly the way it is in the log tables. And you can see it can, it's quite complicated with all the different Y's and the N minus 1 and everything. But the way I'm going to explain it next uh, should make it a lot easier to digest. So it's much easier to consider it like this. This is the way I would translate that trapezoidal rule, right? Your H is always going to be the width of the strip, okay? Divide by two, and then Y1 will always represent the first height, and then we're gonna plus the last height, okay? Plus twice, the sum of the remaining heights. Now, that's a much easier way to understand it, okay? The width of the strip is what goes in there. Then we're talking about the first, add the last, add twice the sum of the remaining. So we're gonna add up all the remaining heights that we haven't added up already. All right, let's jump into a, uh, an example, right? Because once you start to see this in action, it'll become even clearer. Okay, so here we go. We are going to work out an approximation for the area of this land uh, using the trapezoidal rule, okay? So I've left this one up here because this is the one we're gonna follow, okay? This is the one that's much more reader friendly. So let's fill it in. So the area will approximate two. Now, the first thing you're going to fill in is the width of the strip. And the width of the strip is what is here, 10. 10 meters is the width. It's always going to be broken up into equal strips. Uh, so 10 meters is the width of each strip there. So 10. Then, of course, we have divide by 2. And then open your square bracket. Now we're going to put in the first height. Now, the first height here we can see is 24. Then we're gonna put in the last height, which is 30. And then we're gonna plus twice, open your brackets. And now in the brackets, we're gonna do the sum of the remaining heights. So we're gonna add up all the remaining heights together. So obviously I've done 24 and I've done 30. And now what's left to add up is 28 plus 34 plus 32 plus 26 plus 24. And that's all the remaining heights. Now what we're going to do is we are going to work this out on our calculator. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a bit by bit and then I'll show you how you can put the whole thing into your calculator, but you just have to be very careful. Sometimes when pupils do that, they make some mistakes. Okay, uh, so for some pupils, it's easier to do it bit by bit to make sure you're not making mistakes in the calculator. But if you feel quite confident in the calculator, I'm going to show you both ways. Okay, because uh, once you have this line of working out, uh, this is the most important bit, okay? Right, let's do the longer way first. So the first thing I'm going to evaluate is 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Then I'm going to open up the square brackets. Now, what you want to be careful of here is the only two things we can add together here to tidy this up is 24 and 30. We can't add this 2 because this 2 is attached to all of this because it's got to be multiplied to everything that's in this bracket, okay? So that's one mistake that pupils often make. They do 24, add 30, add two, okay? So you can't add that two, that two is attached to all of this. So let's just do the 24, add 30, which is 54. And now it's gonna be two times, and we'll add these up uh, in the brackets. So I have 28, plus 34, plus 32, plus 26, plus 24, which is 144. So 144 in the brackets. And now I can work this out. I have got a uh, five bracket, 54, plus two times 144, close those two brackets, and I've got 1,710. And don't forget, it is area. And of course, we are talking about meters. So we're talking about meters squared. So now just to put a, a quick emphasis on if you are putting all of this into the calculator, okay, we've just got to be super careful that we're typing it in exactly as I have it there. So let's have a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is 10 over 2. So put the fraction up 10 over 2. And then I'm going to open the first bracket. Then 24 plus 30 plus 2 bracket. And now what's in the brackets? We have 28 plus 34 plus 32 plus 26 plus 24. And close that bracket and then close another bracket for the squared bracket. So you've got to make sure you have everything there and press equals. And we're getting it 1710 uh, meters squared. Okay, so let's get the area of this uh, plot of land uh, using the trapezoidal rule. So I've written out my trapezoidal rule in my more kind of layman's terms, easier, more user-friendly uh, way. So now I'm going to fill in all the bits of information. This shape is slightly different to the one I had before because of the way it's starting off here, okay? All right, so watch out for that. I'm going to deal with that now in a second. Let's fill this in. First thing we can fill in, of course, is the width of the strip. And the width of the strip is 12. So 12 over 2. And then open up your squared bracket. Now, the first height. Well, technically, the very first height, where it's starting on the left-hand side here, uh, it has no height, basically. So what we've got, we've got to put in here to recognize that this is the starting point. This is the first part. The way we're going to have to put in the height for here is we will say that the height, of course, is zero. And put that in. If you're starting on the ground, there's no height. And that is the first place you're starting here. So you've got to put in the height as zero. The last height, of course, though, is 12. So we can put in 12 for the last height. Sometimes you might have it that the first and the last height is zero if they're both starting on the ground, okay? So you must put them in as zero if that is the case. But here I've just got one starting on the ground. So the first height is zero, but the last height, I do have a height of 12. Okay, then plus twice. Now the sum of the remaining. So let's see what's left. So I have 10 plus 21 plus 26 plus 30, plus 28, plus 26, plus 14. Close the bracket and close the square bracket. Okay, and now let's evaluate this. 
So 12 divided by 2 is 6. 0 add 12 is 12. And then, of course, it's going to be 2 times. And I have uh, 10 plus 21 plus 26 plus 30 plus 28 plus 26 plus 14, which works out to be 155. So now that works out to be 6 bracket, 12 plus 2 times, and in the brackets, of course, 155, close that bracket, and another bracket for the squared bracket equals 1,932. And of course, don't forget your units, meters squared. Right, let's take a look at an example like this, where we have a plot of land that's quite irregular, both along the top and along the bottom, if you like. So it's irregular all the way around. So what we're going to do with this, rather than perhaps splitting it into two, uh, you might be inclined to think, oh, we might have to break it apart and do the top bit first and then the bottom bit. What we can do is do it all together. And of course, when we're considering the heights, we're starting here, if you consider that point right there in the middle and that point right there in the middle, consider them to be at zero. And then the first height would be zero, of course, the last height would be zero. And then when we come to the remaining heights, we'll include the full height together. So when we're doing the sum of the remaining heights, we will add up four add two in one go, which would be six add seven, add six and five, of course, 11, add 13, and then add 10. And that's the way we're going to deal with this. So let's take a look. So the width of the strip is, of course, three. Uh, the first, the very first height, because it's starting right here, is going to be zero. The last, again, is right uh, here in the middle. So we're calling that zero and then twice the sum of the remaining. So we're talking about four and two, six, four and three, seven, six and five, 11, seven and six, 13, and six and four, 10. Okay, so that works out to be one and a half. Zero plus zero is zero, and of course it's gonna be twice all of this. So adding this up, I have 6, add 7, add 11, add 13, add 10, which is 47. Close the brackets. And now typing this in, I have 1.5, open the brackets, 0 plus 2 times 47, and close the squared bracket with another bracket on the calculator, and we'll get 141. And if there's no units, we'll just say units squared because of course it's area. Okay, last example we're gonna to do together is one where um, we're missing some a piece of information, but we are given the result. In this case, we're told that the area of this plot of land is 612 meters squared, but we don't know the width of the strip. Okay, so what we're going to do, as always, is we'll just fill in all the pieces we know and we'll see what kind of equation we end up with then and how we can then solve that equation. So this time, of course, you have the formula written out in full for yourself. We've used our layman's terms type of formula, which is much easier to understand. And we know the A this time, so we're going to put in 612 for the A straight away. The width of the strip, of course, is x, so you may write it in as x, we don't know it. Divide by 2, and then let's start filling in our heights. Now, this one is starting here in the middle. You see that? All right, so we put that in, remember, as 0. The last one as well is starting there in the middle, so we're going to put that one in as 0. And then twice the sum of the remaining. So let's see what we have. 2 times. Then we have... 10 and 3, which is 13. We have 8 and 4, which is 12. And we have 7 and 2, which is 9. And they are the remaining heights. Close the brackets. 
Now here's where you just want to be quite familiar with how to tidy up and evaluate this side uh, because you're not going to be able to put this in on the calculator in its totality with that x. So let's see what we have. So the left hand side we have 612. Okay. Now we're treating this as an equal sign. I know it's an approximation but our same kind of rules for solving equations here will apply. Okay. Um, x over 2, there's not much we can do with that at the moment, but what we can do is tidy up what we have inside the brackets, okay? So 0 add 0 is 0, and then it's going to be 2 times, and of course the first thing I can evaluate as I would normally is add the 13, add the 12, and add the 9, and we're getting 34. Close the brackets and close the brackets, okay? So... I have 612 equals, I'm going to change it to an equals just to make our lives a little bit easier here when solving, x over 2, and of course, in the brackets, 0 plus twice 34, so 0 plus 2 times 34. Okay, so let's just evaluate this bit here, gives us 68. So now we want to solve for that x. Well, what we would always do if we ever have a, a fraction in an equation is we would look to get rid of it, okay? So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this divide by two. And the best way to get rid of divide by two is to multiply by two. So I'm gonna multiply the right-hand side by two, okay? That whole side we're gonna multiply by two. And what that will do is that will get rid of the divide by 2 straight away. Now, of course, if I multiply the right-hand side by 2, I've got to multiply the left-hand side by 2. Okay, so I'm going to do 2 times 612. And what's left? Well, what's left then is uh, 2 times 612, which is 1,224. That's after cancelling that out. And you just have x times 68, which of course is 68x. 68 times x. And now to get x on its own, you want to get rid of this 68. Well, this 68 is being times. So to get rid of something that's being times, we will, of course, divide by it. And then that will get rid of that to give me the x on its own. But of course, if you divide the right-hand side by 68, you have got to divide the left hand side by 68 and when you do that on the calculator 1 2 2 4 divide by 68 we get 18 so 18 meters okay meters is what it is if you look at the question 18 meters is therefore my answer